people. I will continue hearing confessions as usual after the sermon. And those of you who attend Sunday Vespers here, we now have a little green uh, booklet, leaflet, that will be on the back table for Vespers that you can follow, it's in English, that you can follow us as we sing Vespers. We have all heard many, many, many sermons on the Good Samaritan, and we're probably somewhat sick and tired of hearing about the Samaritan. Well, today, we're going to look at it from a different point of view. We're going to look at it briefly from the priest and the Levite's point of view. Are you aware that if you look at the priest and the Levite from a certain perspective, you can justify their actions? Could they not have looked at, at the man the, who was robbed, at the victim? Could they not have looked at him and said, or oh, that was the will of God, that he was robbed and beat up. So I'm not going to interfere with God's will. They could have said that. We could look at the priest and the Levite and say that it was God's will that they pass by this man. We have to be very careful how we use and see the will of God. It is too often misused and misapplied. How many times in our own lives, if we examine them honestly, do we not find ourselves applying the will of God in one way to our neighbor, but in a m different way to ourselves? We have a tendency to blame everything on the will of God whether it's accidents, or the weather, or our own sins. I am going to read a very short quotation from the book that we are reading at Compline. It's written for religious, but it applies to everyone. The title of the book is Basic Spiritual Means by Father Philip E. Dion. C -M. And it's the chapter on abandonment to God's will and our present state. And the subtitle is Why Try? And I quote, But the objection continues. If we will be what God wants us to be at any given moment, what is the use of our trying to be more perfect? Such a question is reminiscent of the pilgrim father who was starting out through the woods without his gun. His wife remonstrated at his temerity, pointing out, that he might be killed by the Indians. He answered that if God willed him to be killed, he would be killed whether he had his gun or not. To which his wife replied, but suppose God wills you to be killed 
on condition that you don't have your gun with you. In her wisdom, she knew that God wills some things absolutely and other things he wills conditionally. The condition in many circumstances is something that depends on us, such as our prayers or our acting in a certain way. Thus, we must try to be perfect because that is God's will for us. We know with certainty that unless we try to be perfect, we cannot be united with his will at all. The end of the quotation. Now let's apply this to the priest and the Levite. It was, most likely, God's will that the priest stop and help the poor man, but the priest said no. Same way with the Levite. But the Good Samaritan, he said yes. God allowed the priest and the Levite to say no to his will. That is what is called his permissive will, as he allows us to commit sin. He does not actively will it, but if we say no because he did give us free will, then he allows us to say no and to commit sin. But we cannot say it is God's will that we commit sin. We cannot say, strictly speaking, that it was God's will, his positive will, that the Levite and the priest pass by the poor man. We must be very careful and very earnest when we examine ourselves that we understand that God's main will for us is that we love him and that we constantly strive to become perfect. All the evils in the world, all the badness, all the sin, he allows to help us to become more perfect. So let us ask God not to show us his will, but to understand his will. May God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.